Yeah, fix ready. Yeah. Oh. Good fish. Good fish. It's on that big grubs. <laughs> Thought I'd just try something different, eh? Big nine inch, nine inch grub. It's a dewy or something. That right, little thready, little fella. Hooked underneath. Down. Oh, How's that? Hooked a bit funny, but we got him. Nine inch grub, slack tide. Yep, another hook up. Feels like a thready. Cannot beat them, but. Ooh. Another good fish. I was on a thready buster. Just chipping away at them here. There's a few on the sound though. We've just um, scanning past a few of them. Yep, it's a thready, I think. Yeah, it's big thready. Nice. So he's been beaten up a little bit. They're all good fish, but he'd be up around you know, high 90s. Good fish. Yeah, so what we're doing, we are pretty well just picked a stretch where we've sanded up a couple of scattered fish. And we're trying to concentrate on the, um, the areas where they're a little bit more denser than others. And we've just come across a fairly decent school, not, not a lot of fish, like four or five fish. And um, it's all about trying to pinpoint them. Um, can't stress enough how, how good a, a side scan imaging sounder uh, helps you find these sort of fish, you know, um, you cover so much more ground than what you would with just normal, you know, conventional 2D sonar. Um, yeah, without, without side scan, I wouldn't catch a lot of fish, so, yeah. You've got to get yourself one of them. Um, plenty, plenty on the market these days. And, um, yeah, they all put out pretty good imaging, so, yeah. And, uh, once you learn how to read one, it's a whole new world of fishing, like, you'll, you'll find a lot more things that you didn't even know existed snags and rock bars, drop-offs, all that sort of stuff. Um, yeah, and you can, and you can uh, actually really focus on, on a particular size of fish as well. Um, it's a lot easier to tell how big a fish actually is on, the, on your uh, high frequency um, readings, as opposed to, yeah, 2D. 2D likes to play a little few tricks on you, but um, 
Yeah, so we're pretty well just finding some fish, casting up current, and then we're just simply jigging slowly up and down with uh, soft vibes and plastics. And uh, the main thing is you just got to get it right on their nose. And once it's on their nose, uh, they don't hesitate generally. Preferably, I like my bait cast tackle. Um, 20 pound braid, 40 pound leader. And uh, yeah, that's generally for soft vibes and all the sort of small, tiny twitching sort of stuff. Um, micro jigging, I don't mind going spin tackle. Same, same sort of stuff, 20 pound braid, 40 pound leader. And um, yeah, pretty well the same sort of principle, right on the bottom and tiny, tiny little twitches. And uh, always keeping in contact direct, like straight on top of your lure. Um, if your lure's drifting miles out, there's no point even really fishing. You just try and use the electric motor. Little fine adjustments every time. Keep the lure like right below the boat. And uh, you'll find that once you see fish coming through on the sound a lot of the time, especially if there's someone fishing up the back right in the transducer beam, you can see their lure hopping. And you can sometimes even see the fish eat the, eat the lure. Oh, don't know. <laughs> Another good fish here on Thready Buster. Not 100% sure what it is. It's coming up easy now. That was big thready. Nice big thready. Once again on a thready buster. Oh yeah. Here's a nice fish. A little bit over a meter. There we go. Not a giant one, but yeah, got to be happy with that. We've uh, been sitting on this fish for about the last 45 minutes trying to get a bite, and that's the result. It's a good fish. Oh, we'll get a measurement on him and a, get a tag and release him. Another 30, I think. <laughs> yep, nice yellow one. Real yellow. He's just hooked. How's that for a bit of contrast? Nice little 30, probably, yeah, high 90s again. Not a giant one, but yeah, good colours on him. Real yellow. I'm a 30 buster again, as usual. Yep, and there is no better feeling than 
sitting on fish for like over an hour and then finally getting a hit. We've been watching them for ages. Going over the top of them, over the top of them, bumping a couple, just not eating, and then one eats, get it right on his nose. It's a good fish. They're all good. <laughs> oh. You got weight. Oh. Oh. Good head shakes. There's the bend. You see him on the sounder. Pumping him up now. Let's be another nice ready. Good fish. Good fish. Swallowed it. Not giving up. There he goes. Yeah, he's a nice one. Look at that. Didn't miss that, did he? Way down the throat. Once again, a thready buster. Good fish. Same deal, yeah, we'll get another measure of that one. We'll tag him, release him. See if he can give us any data. With the Mercury 135, I also went with uh, Vessel View 4, which sits up on the helm there. It's a digital gauge, and the gauge can tell you everything from economy, which you can tune to drive your boat to the best fuel, um, trim tabs, how much fuel you're using as you're doing your speed, and a heap of other features. If you're interested in it, check them out on www.mercurine.com.au, and it'll give you a full rundown on what the Vessel View 4 or the 7 can do for you. Yeah, bro. <laughs> How's that for some Brisbane River threadfin action there? Some big fish coming out of that deep murky water of the Brisbane River. When you are fishing deeper water, whether it be along a rock ledge or a hole in your local creek or river, or even offshore, a great plastic option is a curl tail plastic. And you saw that thread fin there that Troy got on that, that nine inch grubs fishing it on the bottom. Curl tails have got loads of action, which makes them good for beginners who want to have a go at soft plastics, right through to the experts who, who fish all the time. That, just that tail action, and also the buoyancy of the Z-Man, which brings that tail up off the bottom puts it right in the fish's face and gives it lots of movement that attracts that fish to, to that plastic and draws that strike. So there you can see Troy was just fishing, he's only fishing small movements, but because of this big tail on this plastic, that plastic coming up off the bottom, fluttering back down again, and that big tail standing up in the fish's face. So that's the nine inch grubs, but it doesn't have to be that big in a curl tail. If you like chasing your brim in the deep water and along the rock ledges and stuff, there's a two and a half inch grubs. Again, that curl tail, can stand up and just attract that strike, trigger that strike, attract that fish to the lure. And a four inch streaks curly tail's there. So that's a good one for brim, good one for snapper, dewfish, that sort of thing as well, when you're getting that plastic down and just hopping it and prospecting that deep water. That plastic that Troy was using, the nine inch grubs, isn't scented. 
and a lot of people like to add a bit of scent to their plastics if they're unscented, especially where, like in that situation, they might be hopping that plastic for an hour or two until those fish switch on and then boom, they might have a red hot session. But you wanna give yourself every chance of getting that strike and that's where a scent comes in. So adding some Procure, whether it be mullet or any of the other flavors that are available, what that does is it draws that fish there and it gets them to hold onto that plastic longer and take that plastic in deeper so that you can really have that time to, to feel, the, feel that subtle take, set the hook and get that fish. <clears throat> so scent, that's the Procure. Comes in a bunch of flavors. Whether you're fishing the fresh, you might want a, a crawfish or a garlic flavor. Or if you're in the salt, maybe it's the mullet or inshore salt water or a shrimp flavor. There's a variety of flavor options there available. And if you've got two or three flavors with you, it allows you to switch it up on the day until you find what the fish are after. So scent will mask any sort of smells that are on your hands like fuel or sunscreen, which can be good. And also in terms of the lure, you've got the lab, lab stuff in there like amino acids, bite stimulants, UV enhancements. So you've got that, that techie laboratory stuff to switch the fish on, but you've also got good old ground up dead mullet in here as well. So whatever the flavor in the Procure, you've got that great combination of tech and that natural fish or shrimp or crawfish ground up in there as well to attract that fish and trigger the strikes. So if your plastic's unscented, you may want to add a bit of scent to it mix the scents up. Some guys actually put two different, their secret squirrel thing is put two different flavors on at once and that gets fish as well. And you'll see that Troy, no matter what lure he's using, he'll generally add a bit of scent to that, that plastic or hard body or vibe or whatever it might be. Bottle wise, you've got a dispenser nozzle on the top there. So that means you're not having to rub the, dip your finger in there and rub it all over the plastics or anything like that. You can use that applicator nozzle to add scent to the plastic flip it shut and away you go. You can put it back in storage again. It doesn't make a mess. It doesn't leave scent all over the place. And this is a gel based scent. So being gel based, if you add a water based scent, a lot of the time you'll add the water based scent and a couple of casts later, you can hardly even smell that it's had scent on there. But being a super sticky gel sort of scent, you apply it maybe 20 casts later, 20 or 30 casts, you'll still feel it and smell it on there. You might add a little bit more and just regularly add it through your session. Just give it a bit of a touch up. But you definitely don't need to pour it all over it like you do the water-based ones to get it to try and stay on there for any length of time. So super sticky gel and will stick to not just plastics but hard bodies. Uh, spinner baits, pretty much any lure type that you want to add it to. When it does get low, you can actually screw that top off and dip your plastic in and get the last bit out of there if you want to. And I actually saw a really good storage tip from someone which was a Velcro dot. So you can actually put a Velcro dot in your boat, Velcro dot on here, and you just attach your scent so that it sits up that way in your boat and all of your Procure runs down into that end so that you get every last drop out of there as well. So, you know, if you've got three flavors, you can put the three flavors across there and away you go. So there you go. If you want to try something a bit different, if you haven't tried uh, soft plastics in your deep water stuff, check out some curl tail options. And don't forget, if you want to maximize your chances or the bite's a bit slow, add a bit of scent and away you go. Cheers. Today's Lorenz tip is Structure Scan 3D. Structure Scan 3D, um, pretty much same sort of principles as your Structure Scan, um, but you get a 3D image. Um, one of the best things about this, this image is you can actually zoom in and pan around your boat, um, look at it from sort of any angle, um, get right down in behind it and you can see as we're driving along the bank here, it'll actually give you the slope of the bank. Um, another great feature with the 3D is um, suspended targets in the water column. So where a traditional um, 2D sonar over a hard bottom, it's very hard to see suspended bait and it gets sort of lost in the, um, in the hardness at the bottom. This will actually give you a different uh, colour palette um, that goes against what you got on, the, on your bottom palette and your targets really stand out. So for those smaller fish where they're quite hard to see, it's, it's a very important tool. That's a quick tip on the new Lowrance 3D structure scan. Um, hope that helps you get a few fish on the water.